It is my pride, pleasure, and privilege to welcome you to Mathematics Simplified. My name is Joseph Jacob. In today's video, we'll focus on how to find the lowest common multiple of group of numbers. Why is it important that we must learn how to find the LCM of a group of numbers? The reason is because when you are trying to add fractions or to subtract fractions, you must get the LCM of the denominators of the fractions. That is the only way you'll be able to add or subtract them. So we are going to look at six methods of finding the LCM of group of numbers. The first method we'll consider in this video is the listing multiples method. The second method we'll consider is the prime factorization. The third method is the prime factorization, this time using the exponents. And the fourth one is the division method. The fifth method we'll consider in this video is the cake or ladder method. Then lastly, the sixth, we'll consider greatest common factor method. But there is another one, the seventh, called the Venn Diagram Method. But for the sake of this video, we are not going to use that method. So pick your pen, pick your paper, let's go to our whiteboard and start solving for LCM using these six methods I mentioned. The first method we are going to use in looking for or finding the LCM is going to be the least multiples method. As the name applies, when you have numbers, you want to find the LCM. Let's assume you have 2, you have 4, you have 6. And you want to find the LCM of these three numbers. All you need to do is to start multiplying that number, each of the numbers, with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, until when you get a number that all the three numbers, these three numbers has in common. That becomes your lowest common multiple. Now, if we say 2 times 1 will give us 2, 2 times 2, 4, 2 times 3, 6, 2 times 4, 8, 2 times 5, 10, 2 times 6, 12, 2 times 7, 14. Let's stop here. You now go to the second number. 4 times 1 will give you 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 6 is 24. 4 times 7 is 28. Now the next one is 6. 6 times 1 is 6. 6 times 2, 12. 6 times 3, 18. 6 times 4, 24. 6 times 5, 30. 6 times 6, 36. 6 times 7, 42. Now, looking at all these numbers you have, which number is the least common multiple in all these numbers? Look at 4. You have 4 here, you have 4 here, but you don't have 4 in the last one, so it's not a common multiple. You have 6 here, you have 6 in the last one, but you don't have 6 in the, in the middle one, so it is not a common multiple. But look at 8. You have 8 in the first one, 
you have eight in the second one but there is no eight in the third one so it is not a common multiple now let's look at 12 you have 12 here you have 12 here you have 12 here 12 is the smallest number or is the least number these three multiples have in common so the lcm of 2 4 and 6 will therefore become 12 because you have 12 in all of the numbers so the lcm of these three numbers becomes 12. that is the first method of getting the lcm remember i said this method is called the least multiples method so all you just need to do is keep listing out the numbers you are multiplying and at the end of the day you get the least common multiple that becomes your lcm this method is challenging because if these numbers are far apart numbers let's say you have one you have 13 you have 17 you have 35 which you are trying to get their lcm it will take you a long multiplication before you'll be able to get the least common multiple so that is the disadvantage of this method let's go to the second method the second method is called the prime factorization in this method we are looking at the prime numbers let's still use the previous example we used remember in the previous one we used the number two we also use the number four we also use the number six so we are trying to make use of these numbers again why why we use the prime factorization method all you need to do is to look at these numbers and try to get their factors when we're talking about getting getting their factors it means those numbers will multiply to get them so when you do two times one you definitely get two when you do two times two you will definitely get four when you do two times three you will definitely get three these are prime factors so we look at the numbers we have one so if you take one this one times we have two in common so we just take one of the twos we have two here we have three here so we've chosen the prime factors of these three numbers so all we need to do now is to multiply them one times two is two two times two is four four times three is the same answer we got in the first method we use 12. so this method is called the prime factorization method example the second example we want to consider using the prime factorization method let's try it with these three numbers eight eight twelve and thirty let's get the lcm of these three numbers using the prime factorization method so what we need to do now is to look at the numbers that when we multiply them we'll get eight we have two times two is four four times two is eight so that is okay for twelve we have two times two is four four times three will give us twelve for thirty we have two times three is six six times five will give us 30 so the prime factors here we have two in common here we write down our two though we don't have these two in common but there is two in the second side we have our two again see this other two we add these two then this line we have our three we add our three we also have a five here we add our five so having done this we'll now have two times two is four 
4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. 24 times 5 will give us 120. So the LCM of 8, 12, and 30 is equal to 120. This is the second example for this method. Now, let's the third method we are going to use is called the prime factorization method using the exponents. You can guess from the names that you can guess from the name that it is very similar to the one we solved earlier, but there is a little difference between them. Let's use the same example we used. You know, this last example we considered, we used the numbers 8, we used 12, and we used 30. Let's use the same numbers and get the LCM using the prime factorization method whereby we consider the exponents. Remember what we did in the last example? We'll start by doing similar thing. And what we did is to look for the numbers that when we multiply them, we'll get each of these numbers we are looking for. So 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. We have 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. We have 2 times 3 is 6. 6 times 5 is 30. Now, the next thing we need to do is to get their exponents. That is why it is called using the exponent method. Now, in getting their exponents, 2 times 2 times 2 simply means 2 raised to power 3. So when we're talking about the exponents, we're talking about the power. So because 2 is in 3 places, we have the power to be 3 for the first one. For the second one, remember, we have 1, 2 as 2. So you have 2 raised to power 2 for the first one. Then we have 3 as well in that same line. But this 3 is only 1. So we have 3 raised to power 1. Now, for the third line, we have only 2 raised to power 1. We also have 3 raised to power 1. We also have 5 raised to power 1. So the numbers we'll now consider are the numbers with the biggest powers. You see 2 is here. 2 here has raised to power 1. It's not the biggest. 2 raised to power 2 is still small. 2 raised to power 3 is the highest power of 2 in all of these. So we'll take that one that is highest for 2. 2 raised to power 3. Then we write our multiplication sign. When you come to 3, you have 3 raised to power 1, 3 raised to power 1. There is no 3 raised to power 2. So 2 of them are the same power. So we just take one of them to have 3 raised to power 1 times, we only have 1 5, and that 5 is raised to power 1, raised to power 1. So what it means is that 2 raised to power 3, as we see here, is 2 times 2 times 2, which is 8. This will become 8 times 3 raised to power 1 is 3, times 5 raised to power 1 is 5, which is equal to 8 times 3 is 24, 24 times 5 is equal to the same thing we got in the first one, 120. This is the prime factorization method using the exponents. That is just what we just done. So let's proceed to another method. The next method we are going to use is the method most people like using. It is called the division method. This method is where we state the numbers in something like a table and we start dividing them with numbers that we leave no remainder until all of them becomes one. When they are all one, we now multiply those numbers we use to solve them and we'll get our LCM. Let's stick with the numbers we've just used. Let's stick to 8, to 12, and to 30. So if you have the number 8, we also have the number 12, 
we also have the number 30 these are the numbers we want to find their LCM so all you need to do now is to draw your line bring your line down bring your line down you ask your yourself which is the list number we can use to divide these numbers you agree with me that 2 will be okay 2 into 8 will give us 4 2 into 12 will give us 6 2 into 30 will give us 15 2 can still go again when you use your 2 2 into 4 will give you 2 2 into 6 will give you 3 2 into 15 it won't go because it always have a remainder in this case all you just need to do is to write down the 15 since we have 2 here 2 can still go again 2 into 2 is 1 2 into 3 cannot go without a remainder 2 into 15 cannot go without a remainder we write them down the next number that we can use in this case will be 3 3 into 1 is already 1 is complete we don't need to divide it again 3 into 3 is 1 3 into 15 is 5 5 is the only number this column is the only number that I've not got into 1 so we just use 5 5 into 5 is 1 so to get the LCM we just need to multiply all these numbers we have here and we'll get our LCM so the LCM now will give us 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 5 2 times 2 is 4 4 times 2 is 8 8 times 3 is 24 24 times 5 is 120 this method is the division method like I said earlier most people like using this method let's go to another method the fifth method is called the cake or the ladder method it is very similar to the division method we have our 8 we have our 12 and we have our 30 so we have our 12 we have our 8 we have our 30 we also start by placing them on a table we place them on a table we start with 2 2 into 8 is 4 2 into 12 is 6 2 into 30 is 15 the next is 2 2 into 4 is 2 2 into 6 is 3 2 into 15 is 15 because it will have a remainder the next one is 2 2 into 2 is 1 2 into 3 it cannot go without a remainder 3 into 15, 2 into 15 it cannot go without a remainder we can still go with 3 to give us 3 into 3 will give us 1 3 into 5 into 15 will give us 5 we don't need to go for the last one like we did in the other formula so all we can now do is to multiply all of this and to multiply it with the last numbers here we'll get what we want so when you have 2 this first 2 times the second 2 times the third 2 times the 3 we come over this side we have 1 times 1 times 5 so what we now have will be 2 times 2 4 4 times 2 8 8 times 3 24 24 times 1 24 24 times 5 will still give us what we have been got getting which is 120 as the LCM this method is called the cake or ladder method let's now progress to the last method this last method is called the greatest common factor method and it is best suited for just two numbers when you have two numbers you want to find their lowest common multiple 
you can use the greatest common factor method. 8 as one of the numbers and 12 as the other number. So all we need to do is to write down the numbers that will give us 8. 2 times 2 times 2 will give us 8. 2 times 2, 4 times 3 will give us 12. Now, all we are looking for are the numbers that they have in common. If you look at the numbers they have in common, they have 2 in common. We take the 2. They have 2 in common. We take the 2. These 2 is not in common with these. The 3 is not in common. So we have only 2 of them. So the number will now get will be 2 times 2 which will equal to 4 so the now we've gotten 4 the next thing we need to do is to multiply this number these two numbers and divide what we get by 4 so when you do 8 times 12 8 times 12 will give us 96 and we divide this 96 with this 4 4 into 9 will give us 2 remainder 1 add the 1 to the 6 it becomes 16 4 into 16 will give us 4 so the LCM of 8 and 12 becomes 24 Remember what we did? We got the factors of 8. 2 times 2 times 2 will give us 8. 2 times 2 times 3 will give us 12. We look at the numbers they have in common. They have 2 in common, we chose 2. They have another 2 in common, we chose 2. They don't have 3 and 2 in common. So 2 times 2 is 4. We, made, we did 8 times 12. 8 times 12 is 96. 96 divided by this 4 will give us 24. So... The LCM of 8 and 12 becomes 24. This is where the cookies crumble on today's video. I'm confident that you can now find the LCM of group of numbers. Well, in our next video, we'll now start making use of what we just learned today. Because from our next video, we'll start adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing fractions. Until then, Stay out of trouble, take good care of yourself, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.